What up, guys? Mr. E85 here as usual. Of course, you know we've been going through the snowstorm. Um, the car, it's very cold temperature outside right now. It's about 21 degrees. This is just a little bit of warmth before we get between everything. And I just wanted to show you how hard E85 can be to start um, in this type of temperature. There's some other aspects and things at play here. There are a few different things that can cause it to be very hard to start, of course. E85 cannot atomize at these types of temperatures. Let's see what the temperature actually is. 23. And battery voltage, of course, is low. As you can see, it is not having it. We'll try again. It wants to start, but not quite. The car's been sitting for four days and the temperatures, the index has been as low as negative four. At this point, we've had several levels of ice and snow combined. Of course, this is another E85 cold start. There's a little bit of change here and there. It is both wet and icy at the same time because you've got ice, you got rain, snow. It's just a combination mess. Car is all but trapped in it, but there she is. It wants to try. It's pretty close. Oh yeah. Temperature is this cold, you gotta keep a little bit of throttle in there with this E85 because E85 does not want to combust at these temperatures. I mean, we're encased in ice, but as you can see with proper parameters, you can bust it off pretty easily. Hey guys, today I'll be doing cold starts on E85. Of course, as you know, cold starting on E85 is one of the hardest situations any tuner may have to deal with, and unfortunately in some cases, especially something that the customer has to deal with. In this case, I'll be showing you for my Mercury Marauder some of the changes that I made to improve cold starting on E85, as well as some of the other different changes that do need to be made in order to improve on top of the tune. Of course, this is the RZASA for the Eek 5. PCM. Uh, first things first, we're going to go straight to fueling. We're going to go straight to our cranking fuel tables. As you can see, we have cranking load since this is a late model or 2004, one of the last EEC 5. It uses a crank pulse width multiplier table as well as a cranking pulse width and a cranking lamb base table. So it has a scale in lamb base, unlike the older Eek 5 strategies, where you don't get the pulse width multiplier table. Instead, you get a table that only shows you basically a flat range of pulse widths directly for the injector, and they are calculated in milliseconds. In this case, it uses a multiplier that multiplies the cranking lamb base, and the ECM calculates on its own based on adaptive strategies and learning. So as you can see, on the top scale, we have our pulse width that will be in time. So we've got 5, 8, 28, 48, 100, etc. And over here to your left, you have 250, 190, 130, 70, 26, 24, etc. What that is, is the temperature. So for each scale, this is the temperature. Of course, the top is the cranking duration in milliseconds. This should be in milliseconds. Let's see, we get a def definition here. Yeah, we've got a normalized air charge. Let me see. And we have a pulse width multiplier. So it shows you a few different things there. Of course, we have a scale here based on engine coolant temperature. In this listing, you can see we have a different set of lamb base. Of course, a lamb base of 1.0 being 14.7 or stoic. And anything below that, of course, in lambda is different so here as you can see the colder it gets the more enrichment we make um, these lower tables probably could use a slight bit more enrichment but i didn't use that table change to do it since a 0.6 
0.6667 lambda is already very rich, I opted to make changes to the multiplier. As you can see here, the multiplier tables, where we have the most issue is in the cold start range, especially anything below 70 degrees. So here, these are the multipliers in the filled in portions of the table, and I've got those at a 1.2. As you can see, during the length of the cranking cycle, we reduce the fuel a little bit just to make sure everything fuels correctly and doesn't flood. At 26 degrees Fahrenheit, we have a 0 0.95 multiplier, which would increase our value um, as far as the amount of fuel we inject. But physically, the number will be lower because we're lower than a 1.0. So you want to be sure when you look at these tables, especially on your maps and on your different ECMs, you want to be able to take note of that. In this case, I went down to a 0.91 and another 0.91, and I went to this range. I was able to crank the vehicle in about 15 to 20 seconds, and that is a little long. Of course, we have some other situations with the vehicle that will also improve that cranking time, such as higher base fuel pressure during a crank, which is already achieved with this vehicle in this tune at 60 PSI base pressure. And we will also be introducing those Ford Racing 47 pound injectors for the supercharger install. Instead of four pin tiles, they have six, which is an improvement as you can see here. And that will also increase the atomization at 60 PSI of base fuel pressure, which will make cold starts even easier than they were before. Since temperatures got to an index roughly here of negative 10 to negative 5 degrees, I've got this area in the 0 0.91 range, and you don't want to get too out of hand when it comes to tuning E85 in these ranges. These are the two primary tables that you have to use. You don't want to get your tables to be too far out of range because you'll actually end up flooding the vehicle instead, and that would not be a desired result or effect, especially during a cold start. You wash the cylinders out, and you, of course, contaminate your engine oil and shorten the life of the engine oil greatly in these cold climates. Of course, my vehicle's coming close to time to replace it, so that's what I'll do here. But as you can see in these tables, we go down as far as a point eighty. So that point eighty, at this point of time, or five milliseconds of crank time, right here, point ninety one would be multiplied by, say in this case or instance, 0 0.660. So if you multiply that value by the value of temperature that coincides between the pulse width and the cranking lamb base as a function of engine coolant temperature, you will actually get your final value. These two tables are reliant on each other, so you would like to scale your table for your engine coolant temperature to lamb base first because that's going to be your static value. From there, you can change dynamically the pulse width multiplier by that value across the course of time for cranking up to 124 milliseconds, which in that case, if you crank past that amount of time, the vehicle will continue to try to crank at that value. As far as I know, these are in milliseconds. I haven't seen anything that says otherwise, so I'm basing this on the older EEC values such as CDAN4 or any other tables but uh, thus far I haven't had any issues with this setup. So this has achieved the best cranking fuel. Of course, as you can see, I had issues cranking the vehicle before. Louisiana doesn't typically see these types of temperatures, so I had to make some changes to these values, especially in the 26 degree and colder range as compared to older tables. Here, if we do a function of the stock tables, you can see, let's go to our uh, stock mass airflow read. Um, here you can see that everything is scaled a little bit differently because that's for gasoline, so it's not comparable to the E85 start. The colder it gets, the more exponential the amount of fuel that is needed for E85 to crank, especially since E85 doesn't like to combust at temperatures below freezing, especially very significantly below freezing, in this case over 32 degrees at at least a maximum, or on average colder than the temperature freezing in Fahrenheit. For E85 cold starts, we must remember that not only is cranking fuel important, but startup enrichment and baseline fuel tables are as well. 
As you can see here under fueling, we have under base fueling your open loop fuel table. Your open loop fuel table is defined in lambda in the middle cells and at the top you have a temperature range on this scale in particular from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 242 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see over here to the left side we have load which is dictated in percents dictated also with a decimal point and not a direct percentage so you go uh, 15, 30, 45, 75 percent load etc. On this table, of course, we have a flat demand for our base open loop fuel table, but we have a startup enri enrichment lamb base subtractor. That startup enrichment lamb base subtractor is important because it's defined as well by both temperature, as you can see, once again, a negative 40 to 242 scale, and it's also dictated in seconds. What this table does, of course, your lambda 1.0 on E85 is a technical 9.8 lambda. The lower the number of lambda, the more enrichment there is. Of course, for the purposes of this vehicle and the wideband I use, I stick to the fuel table for E10. So that's basically tuning your tables, especially on this older ECM, in a non-flex fuel manner, since the tune is scaled over to use E85 only or various content. So in the startup in, in enrichment lamb base subtractor, it's only open loop that has this function. So if you look at this table, at the different points or so many seconds of running at a certain temperature, in this case zero degrees on this table I've got highlighted here, you'll see starting at one second we have more enrichment and as we go we reduce that enrichment as the vehicle is running. The importance of this, once again, is that ethanol, as compared to standard gasoline, needs a lot more cold enrichment in order for the engine to continue to run. On gasoline, we don't need as much, and I can show you in a comparative table here. I'll show you a bin comparison of the stock table for gasoline. As you can see, there's almost no enrichment much further than 15 seconds or so. But for E85 ethanol, enrichment, especially in very, very cold temperatures, is very much needed. Now, ironically, this is a lot different than running E85 under a heavy load where on gasoline, typically you need to cool valves, especially on a boosted setup, and even naturally aspirated. You may have to run things a little bit richer. On ethanol E85 specifically, you don't have to run anything as rich as you normally would because of the cooler temperature of the fuel. But that cooler temperature of that fuel and its much higher vaporization point, of course, require you to enrich it a lot more at cold temperatures. So on this scale table, we slowly pull fuel out because remember the higher the number subtractor is, for your open loop fuel table, the lower that number will be, and the lower that number is when you subtract from the primary table, the richer your mixture is. So the computer will automatically compensate itself to target those mixtures when you have everything set up. One thing to note with these enrichment and coal startup tables is that the only way, and absolutely the only way, you can calibrate these cold start tables is once you have the vehicle warmed up, you have the mass airflow and injector high slope, low slopes, and brake points dialed in. And once you have those dialed in, then you're able to dial in your startup enrichment. Because remember, every time you change your mass airflow, or you change your injector properties, your primary base open loop fuel table and your enrichment will change. So you have to ensure that you have those dialed in prior to doing this. Of course, we can also look under our ignition tables as well. And let me close these first because it goes back and pulls those up. We've got our MBT spark, so we've got our spark tables here as well. Uh, spark for this condition is fine. Of course, ethanol at lower loads actually requires less ignition advance. And the reason it requires less ignition advance is because th while the detonation and the anti-detonation properties of ethanol or an alcohol fuel are a little different, ironically, the flame front is actually faster. So it has a faster flame front, but it burns slower. 
and that may sound very confusing, but that's the chemical property of the fuel as opposed to higher octanes of standard gasoline. So because this burns very rapidly, less ignition advance is actually required to make peak power. So on your tables, you always want to be sure that you are not over advanced in your um, low RPM, low load situations, because that could cause basically an inefficiency in your burning in your cylinders and you will exceed your spark timing on E85 before you knock. So your MBT or your max brake torque spark has to be calibrated for your peak mile an hour or your you know your peak dyno numbers. You don't want to do it based on hearing detonation because by the time you hear detonation on E85 content, you're already far too advanced. So this will be something to note when the vehicle is cold and you also want to see that you have any emission standards as well for emissions compliance when you're running your cats um, you also have an enrichment for cats in a safe mode if you are tuning cats on the vehicle which by pinky up you should so just ensure that you aren't over advanced when you do have your vehicle set up on your spark tables and the fueling as well same difference as long as the vehicle parameters are set correctly you should be able to drive the vehicle away without any problems of course this is on a base fuel pressure of 60 psi for this setup with the stock injectors and soon 47 pound injectors will be in so I hope that this information was very helpful to you and I hope that you're able to take this tips and tricks away even for your uh, non-Ford vehicle tuning because the principle remains the same. These are the chemical properties of that fuel and you'll want to be able to take that with you when working on those vehicles as well and um, building a proper calibration that starts in sub-zero and uh, below freezing temperatures.